up, Fight Fans? We're back for yet another week of shooting shit uh, here on the Loudmouth MMA Podcast Network, Combat Press, and everywhere where this show is simulcasted. Um, we have yet another great guest on our show today, but before we get to her, uh, I do want to thank my sponsor really quick, please. Uh, for most of our fans here, we do have an Illinois here. Uh, if you have any home improvement projects, indoor or outdoor, go to facebook.com to Cornelius and Sons. Uh, they will help you with any of your home improvement projects. Um, you know, Ask for Raul. Raul's a good guy. Like I said, he's usually at my house once a week fixing stuff because I am worthless and cannot do anything myself. Uh, so again, that is Cornelius and Sons on Facebook. All right, we kind of continue the uh, the tradition. The last three or four episodes that we've had of this show, uh, we have yet another contender series veteran with us today, uh, all the way from Rome, Italy. So our first non uh, USA interview, we are with Miko Designi. I probably said that wrong again. How are you today? Hi, thank you for having me. I'm really good. Thank you. How are you? Oh, can't complain. Supposed to be at work right now, but instead I'm talking to you, so don't tell my boss. <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> so, uh, you know, we have a, a, I think we set a seven hour time difference. Is that right? Yeah. So yes. It's, uh, it's probably about dinner time for you then, right? Yeah. I just finished training and I just got home. I will get, get my food ready soon. So, so yeah, we'll have a talk, and then then I go make my dinner. <laughs> so I will. Be, I'll keep this quick for you, so I don't uh, keep you from eating. I don't want you to get hangry on me. <laughs> so, no, I won't. I won't. <laughs> speaking of, you know, the USA Italy thing. Obviously, I know you've trained in the United States. Uh, you were at Jackson Winkle John. I don't know if you're still affiliated with them or not. Uh, so first off, do you still train with them, or and is the reason you're not here right now because of the COVID lockdowns? Yes. So I was supposed to move to the States and go train full time at Jackson Wing in January. Um, so what happened is that I got offered a fight in um, in Spain as LFA, at uh, AFL, sorry, yeah. mixed words, mixed letter. So AFL, Valkyries offered me this title fight for the first female only event in Europe. So I was super excited and I took the fight. So I was like, okay, I'll fight in March and I go to the states in the meantime i will apply for my visa my visa was put on hold and i just focused on the fight and the week i was supposed to fight uh the lockdown started here in italy and in spain as well so the fight got cancelled like the the date was postponed and all the embassies closed so my esta like my tourist permission for fly for flights um has been put on hold my visa re- West was put on hold, so I have no idea when I can come back to the States. They told me that September 21st they will reopen the embassies, but I still got no answer about my visa. So October 10, I will fight, and then I'll find my way to get back to the States and train at Jackson Wing as soon as possible because I miss that place so much. You should probably just come here. A lot of people don't really follow the rules and just come here. So you might be okay. Just uh, just come over. They won't stop you. <laughs> well, what I heard is that if you go there with an ESTA, they will just cancel it and send you back home. So I, I really don't have $800 to waste. <laughs> So I'll wait. I'll do things properly. <laughs> yeah, you, you sound a lot smarter than me. That makes a lot of sense. So um, <laughs> it's so, just money wise, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah, monetary. Um, I ran out of my contender series money. So I got to yeah, wait. That was for last that. year. I guess that makes yeah. sense. Um, so, uh, what, you, so you've obviously trained in Italy. You've also trained in the United States. Uh, what is your favorite part about the United States and training here? And then what's your favorite part about being in Italy and training? So I really love training in the States, most of all because of the people I've met at Jackson Wing. Because like this is just on a human level. I just met so many beautiful souls and the coaches have been so welcoming. And I've been a fan of Greg Jackson since I've started this sport. So I think he's a genius. So having a chance to train with him and just hear hear him talking, hear him saying whatever he, he says about military strategy applied to MMA, it's just amazing it's it's a big honor just to hear his voice and just to have him following you uh during bag work or like round and pound or whatever he's teaching is amazing coach winkle john has been so great to me he held meets for me like um so many times before my fights like all the girls there are are amazing so just having a chance to see athletes like holly holm or michelle waterson getting ready for their fights um spar with them train with them just be around their 
aura, their vibes is just is just amazing. And from the first Emmy that joins the gym to the last one of the pros, all the people there are moved by the same feeling. Like a lot of people moved there for training. So we're all struggling in the same way. We're all giving each other the same vibes. And it was the first time in my life that I had people that were like similar to me and had the same lifestyle. Here I don't have other female fighters. So all my friends are like, oh, let's hang out. It's Saturday night. And I'm like, no, girls, like I've been sparring this morning. I'm tired. Like I'm training tomorrow at nine. Like a guy invites me for dinner and I'm on diet. Like tomorrow I have pads at nine. So it's really weird. Well, there, everybody has the same lifestyle. So we hang out together. We go uh, dancing together. Uh, we go dinner together. We do everything as a group, as a team. And you, you never feel weird. Like, you just feel weird when you can eat and your friend is cutting weight, but it's just like, okay, I will cook for you and, and you'll cook for me whenever I'm cutting weight. So it's really nice as as um as an emotional support to be there, not just for technical reason, which I love. I really love the training there, but most of all, I like the humans being, the human beings that, that just walk around that gym. It's really, really great. <laughs> is, there a, is there a best thing about training in Italy or is it just second, second so, rate? Um, um, the good thing about training in Italy is that, of course, I can train in my house. I have my strength and conditioning coach that has been following me since day one. I have um, I have some friends here, but uh, it's really hard to set up a camp here. I don't have sparring partners. There's no body. There's no actual bodies for me. I have just a really good uh, sparring partner for K1. She's called Gloria Peritore. She is now the ISKA champion. She's an amazing K1 fighter but I have nobody to grapple, to wrestle, and to, to set up like a proper camp here. So to get ready for this fight, uh, I went to Spain to train with Vanessa Rico and her team. Mm -hmm. And Vanessa Rico is an MMA fighter that was a judo Olympian. Yep. So she can apply her judo to MMA really well. And that's what I wanted to, to learn. Mm -hmm. Because my coach at Jackson Wing, Harrison Ledger, is a judo black belt, jiu-jitsu black belt, and he uses his judo uh, in MMA a lot and it changed my game. So all I wanted is find somebody in Europe that could give me like some similar kind of because I really like training with Harry and the thing he teaches me. So I went to train with, with Vanessa and, and I could do some judo, like using the judo against the cage and just experimenting with a kind of wrestling I don't, looks of wrestling I don't get here because the level of wrestling in Italy is really low and it's not really well mixed with MMA. So I can go to a wrestling gym, but I don't have wrestling for MMA. So, so yeah, I had to find a group of girls. Luckily, I met one of these uh, Spanish girls, Mariona, when I was in Jackson Wink. She helped me get ready for a contender series, and then she invited me to go to Spain. And that's where I met Vanessa, and that's where I got contacts with Fran Montier and all the, the promotion that's now offering me the main event and uh, the belt for Valkyries. For sure, and we're going to definitely talk about that fight in a, in a few moments. But, um, yeah, so just really quickly, because I, I don't like talking about COVID on the show a lot, but I know Italy uh, was kind of one of the early ones that was hit pretty hard by it. How was being in Italy during the COVID? Oh, my God, it was crazy. It looked like being in a movie. <laughs> like, seriously, like, I was in fight camp, so I was, like, every day in the gym, focused. I was water loading, and I got a call, and, and they were like, oh, the fight's off. So I was, at, I was drinking like, I was my second gallon of the day and they were like, drop the gallon and go eat a cheesecake or some carbonara. And I was, it was a nightmare because from training every day, focused, ready, sharp, diet, going home, doing nothing. You don't know when you're gonna get out. There was this super weird silence, so quiet. And it was just broken by people singing at 8 p.m. outside of their windows, all the same song. So it felt like some kind of nuclear war, some kind of post-atomic feeling. And the idea that I couldn't go to the States, I couldn't fight. The gyms were closed, so I couldn't train. I've had my mom holding mitts for me because I was going insane. And, and I got depressed a lot, like seriously, after two months, I was like, I gained so much weight. My training was not going well. Cause I was just like running around the building and, and there was like cops with go home. What are you doing outside of your house? Go home. And I was like, um, run. no, run. Okay, I'll go home. I would, I would, I would have answered. Like, I'm 20 something. I'm healthy. Yeah, that's why I was like, uh, it's like my dog died a year ago. Otherwise, I would have had a dog to walk. If you don't have a dog to walk, you walk back home. And I was like, I'm an athlete. I need to, to train. I need to. So ridiculous. So it 
was bad. But when the gym reopened, um, the K1 gym, Raini Clan, the one where I'm training at, organized spaced out trainings just of shadow boxing in front of the mirror. And that helped a lot because when we started training again, having contact, all the people that trained there when we had no contact were really on another level from the other one. So we worked on footwork, we worked on shadow boxing, we worked on our form. So I could actually make my striking better even if I was not touching anybody. Right. I mean, on on my mind, uh, it was really it was really challenging, of course, staying focused and just like keep thinking that one day you'll fight. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, you have to keep. I, that's the, I think a lot of people were really depressed from the lockdowns. I know I was not being able to go to the gym or anything. The thing is that um, since there were so many traveling limitation in at Jackson Wing, they received an invitation from UFC to send all the infos about the fighters that were ready for a fight. So since I've, I've just lost Contender Series, I got a call from Jackson Wink and they were like, Mikol, if you have your papers ready and your documents ready, we're going to send your infos to the UFC because they're looking for fighters that are ready to fight. We knew you had a fight, so you're ready to fight. Are you ready? And I was like, yes, but I can't come to the States. So again, I'm like, okay, it's a nightmare. Would it's you like, have I been able to go to Fight Island? No. no. Oh, really? Like, yes. But they wouldn't sign me to go to Fight Island. Oh. They have other fighters, the one that they can get to the States. So my friend here, Alessio Di Chirico, that's one of the few yeah. Italians that are still in the UFC, he had a really hard time because uh, he went to fight in Vegas and he didn't know if they were moving his fight to Fight Island. If he could go, like half of his team couldn't go to Vegas with him. His flight got canceled. He had to reschedule. He had to fly like a couple of days before the fight. It was crazy. Yeah. So they were looking for people that were able to fight at the UFC Apex and had their documents ready. Okay. So, so yeah, they, they did the um, Abu Dhabi Fight Island thing just to get on their cards a lot of fighters that couldn't get to the States. Yeah, a lot of, you're right. There's a lot of international fighters on that. That is true. Now, outside yes. of fighting, um, you are into modeling. Um, you were uh, with Suicide Girls. So, uh, first thing, how did you get into the modeling? And then secondly, like, how do you balance that with being a professional athlete? So um, I started modeling when I was 18 years old. Uh, I saw a picture on Google of two tattooed girls hugging each other with the Suicide Girls log, and I went to check what that was. And I was like, this is amazing. It's like a tattooed version of Playboy where the girls can like portrait themselves how they want, uh, choose their style, choose their outfits, choose their hair, piercing tattoos. Wow. For me, it was just like mind blowing. It was like 15 years ago. So there was nothing like that. The internet wasn't this... Um, like social medias were not that big and even Facebook was not that big. So we had MySpace, we had Photolog. It was like a weird time to be an alternative girl. So I've always felt like an outsider. Like I felt I had nobody that was like me. And when I joined this side, I was like, oh my God, like like same feeling I felt when I was at Jackson. We go, There's so many girls that are weird like me and have the same weird life that I had. So... I was really, it was really, it was mind blowing. It was um, eye opening. So I've started modeling when I was 18 years old. Um, I mean, I don't do it professionally anymore. Like it's not my main job right now. My main focus is on fights, but I still model when uh, when I meet like good photographer or somebody I really love to take pictures with. But I think that with Suzette Gears, I'm kind of done because I think it's more for, for younger girls. Like when you're 18, 19, 20, you're, you're finding your way and then you, you specialize in your, in your field. Like I have a, my best friend, the one that started with me, Ria, Ria right now, she's one of the most famous tattooed models. She went on that road. I gave up on modeling a little bit to focus more on training. And I mean, I'd still model for fun, but my focus is a hundred percent on, on getting, on getting better and, and getting ready for fights. For sure. And you mentioned that a lot of the people on there are, are pretty tatted up. Uh, obviously, yeah. you are as well. Uh, so I guess, you know, tattoos have become a lot more popular than it was, like you'd say, 15 years ago or so. Um, so, A, do you think that tattoos are addicting? And that might be, you might be Hell, case, yeah. in point. <laughs> case in point because you have so many. But I can tell you one thing, that when you're young and you have few, it might be addicting. When you have more than 100, like I do, you don't want that. You don't want any more, any more of that pain. So I've started being a sissy and I've started getting tattooed with like 
um, anesthetic creams and just like, no, 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 I just want to do like half hour session, not more than that. <laughs> when I was younger, I used to like four hours, five hours. Yes. Like let's have two tattoo artists, one tattoo in my leg and one tattoo in the ribs. <laughs> ah, no. We get something small with anesthetic after <laughs> half hour, I'm done. Yeah, I, so, I, I'm, I'm one of the few people that actually don't really think tattoos hurt. The only one that I have that hurt was on the ribs. That one was a little bit uncomfortable, but other than that, this one. Oh yeah, my that God. would not be very fun. Yeah. That doesn't Terrible. look terrible. Well. <laughs> I bet mine's small. Mine's about, well, I'll just show it, but mine's only a little, mine's a little guy here, but. It hurts. It, oh, it hurts. I mean, it wasn't so comfortable. Much. It wasn't comfortable. I have uh, I have six total tattoos. It was the only one that I felt uncomfortable for. Definitely. Um, sure. What which of your of your tattoos is your favorite or the one that you're most proud of? So I I'm happy that I started my sleeves from bottom. So I have the worst thing on on the bottom and the nicer <laughs> here. When usually people have the worst things here, yeah. and then they have the nicer things. So I really like these tattoos because. Uh, this one is a boxer. Yep. And this one is um. So this is hard to explain. This is the hand of a skull that's holding a mirror, and and the skull is looking at herself, and she sees herself beautiful. So this was my my way of saying that the beauty is in the eyes of the person that looks. So if you see yourself beautiful, you'll always be beautiful, even if the mirror is broken, even if you're already dead and and bo flesh and you're no more flesh you're just bones if you see yourself beautiful you're gonna be beautiful well that's good for me because so, i know this that, face has shattered many amirs so yeah <laughs> <laughs> so so yeah this one is for my modeling this is for my fighting and they kind of sum up uh the 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 duel i have inside me <laughs> yeah and, and, and of course they have meaning too so getting back to the fight side of things like you said you have a fight coming up in a, i believe two weeks or two weeks from yes. tomorrow yes. uh two weeks from tomorrow. right so yes. yeah we're filming this on a friday and it'll actually probably go up today because i need this week's episode put up but uh you will be fighting audrey Karosh at afl valkyries for the the title so uh, just kind of break this fight down. What do you see in your opponents that you think uh, kind of just break her down and then just tell me how you see this fight going? So um, I've studied her a lot. I saw she is, uh, she's coming from karate. Her striking stance come from karate. And uh, she, she likes to, to wrestle on her feet. She doesn't like to, to shoot doubles or something like that. She, she likes to, uh, to do Greek Roman more than, uh, um, than freestyle wrestling. And she feels really confident on the ground. But I am pretty sure that I'm better than her in every field of the fight. And so I'm planning to, to dictate uh, where the fight is going to take. If she wants to take me to the ground, I will keep it standing. If she wants to keep it standing, I'll take it to the ground. So I will be the one deciding where the fight goes. So um, I feel really confident. I've had a really good camp. And... Uh, I'm excited because it's gonna be a really, really tough fight, really good fight. Uh, she she has a lot of experience, she has more fights than me. Uh, so so yeah, it's gonna be interesting, and and I'm excited to get back in a cage uh, for such a for such a big card. It's it's a, it's a big thing for Europe. So uh, being main event, like my fight has been moved to main event, and fighting for the belt. It's a big honor, and I can't wait. <laughs> yeah, and it should be a really, really fun fight. I mean, you have a pretty aesthetically pleasing style. We saw that on the Contender Series. You like to, you like to stand and bang. You like to grapple. Yeah. So, I mean, there's, there's, not a, there's not a lot of inaction in your fight. So, we're definitely looking forward to that. Uh, hopefully, we'll be able to find a stream. I don't know about you. I, was wa I know you were training. I was watching two different fight cards while I was working today. So, any way I can get the fights. So, we'll definitely try yeah, to no, keep an eye on that. Streaming and... Uh, yeah, there, there should be a uh, pay-per-view streaming and, uh, yeah, you should be able to see it. <laughs> excellent. Excellent. So good luck to you in that fight. Uh, like I said, yeah. it should be a good one. Now, uh, focusing on the UFC, we have a fight card tomorrow, UFC 253. I'm sure you're looking forward to it as much as I am. Oh yes. Oh yes. I'm excited for this card. Did you, uh, before we talk about the two main fights, uh, did you see the, uh, the stare downs today with, uh, Israel Adesanya and Paula Costa? Yes. I love that. 
I love that. I thought it was great. Costa threw the white belt at him. He threw it right back at him. And then someone grabbed him and they went in like the karate kid uh, crane stance. Karate. And then like they were talking about it. Paulo Costa was like, you can't even throw an arm lock. You're white belt. Just <laughs> yeah, that'll be interesting for sure. Uh, before we yeah. get to that fight, let's talk about the co-main event because there are two titles on the line. So we will basically be having our first ever light. Unless there's a draw, let's not jinx it. But, uh, you know, we're going to have our first non-Daniel Cormier, John Jones, light heavyweight champion in probably like 10 years almost. Uh, so oh, yeah. we got Dominic Reyes. We have Jan Blahovich. Uh, what's your thoughts on this fight? And then give us a prediction. So uh, I'm really excited about this fight as well because I was uh, hoping to see Blackowitz fighting over him again. So I really hope that Alistair gets his shot at the title. So I hope that the, the winner between this fight is going to face Alistair soon. So I think like uh, uh, both of them have a really, really good striking. And I think Dominic Reyes has a little bit advantage on wrestling. Mm -hmm. Uh, his takedown accuracy is a little bit higher than, than Blachowicz one. But anyway, it's going to be an amazing fight. Both of them showed uh, amazing skills in their most recent fights. So, so yeah, I'm excited for that. I'm excited. It's yeah. going to be really good. Yeah, it should be a really good one. And I think, um, you know, I, I think you're right. I think Reyes is not only a better wrestler. I think he's a better overall athlete. I think he's just a, a fantastic athlete. Um, and he's so hungry. Like, yeah. you can see hunger in his eyes so absolutely because he, he you know a guy who thinks he beat john jones in his last fight and now he's coming out to prove that he is should yeah, should have been course. the champion in the first place in his it was really fight it, yeah it was like it was yeah, for sure that with john jones he did like an amazing fight so a lot of people say that it was like it was neck and neck yeah, it was close we're even convinced that john john won that like i feel like like john's uh is, is so dominant i i really thought that he won but the fight was so close yeah. that i'm excited to see this and i'm excited when um a long time reigning champion vacates his belt because it gives fresh air to the division and like motivates the other fighter to bring out the to take out the best uh in them so I'm sure that that this fight is going to be big motivation for the whole for the whole light heavyweight division. Yeah, and it also helps the UFC build a new star because John Jones is an established star. He's moving on now. It's time to yep. build a new box office draw, and I think Dominic Reyes can definitely be a box office draw. Sure. Um, so, who do you take? But in this everything, fight? everything a champion needs. Like, it's got a good mentality, yep. good striking, good wrestling, good control on the ground. It's yes, that's going to be. It's, gonna be nice to watch for sure now do you have a prediction for this fight who do you think what takes it i don't know i don't know i think well i think ray is but i would love to see blackowitz win just because i want to see him rematch alistair for the belt so um Logically, I would say Reyes, but my heart will say Blachowicz. Yeah, my heart takes Blachowicz because I always root on the Polish fighters. I will take Reyes as well, but Blachowicz does have that one-punch knockout power. If he if he's able to find the chin once, he can definitely put Reyes down. So it'll be interesting. Yes, for sure. I now, in the you. main event, as we were alluding to before this fight, we talked about uh, the, the weigh-ins. We have the middleweight title on the line. We have Israel Adesanya, the reigning champion, taking on Paulo Costa, who, I mean... If this was a bodybuilding contest, Paulo Costa wins 10 times out of 10. But this is a fight, so we have to uh, – let's break yeah. this fight down. What do you see in this one? Well, I don't think Paulo Costa is just uh, a bodybuilder. I think he's amazing. Like, I'm a big, big Paulo Costa fan. Like, I really like the guy. I really like his fighting style. I like the way he, he was, like, smart enough to talk back. Like, Adesanya is smart. Like, the guy knows how to talk, knows how to pick on his opponents, and I really love that – uh, Paulo Costa was able to talk back and fire back. So, I mean, Adesanya is an alien. Like, he's a specimen. Like, he's a superhuman. Like, his striking is unpredictable. Uh, his takedown defense is, is amazing. But Paulo Costa, we have only see, seen him striking. I'm curious to see if he can take this fight on the ground. Um, I mean, by all the, the teasing he did before the fight, I'm sure he will try to take this fight to the ground. Sure. So oh, I would like to see Israel Adesanya challenged on the ground for the first time. And I mean, if the fight stays on the feet, I'm sure that Adesanya will get uh, really creative and will put on a show and Paulo Costa will just look for that one punch knockout. He has the power to do that. He has the power to, to win by just one punch. 
But I'm curious to see if the wrestling and the grappling of, of Paulo Costa can, can put Adesanya in big troubles. For sure. Like, that would be interesting to look at. I think a big so, thing, too, might be cardio, because, you know, Costa does carry around a lot of muscle, and I, I've seen him kind of get slower as the fight goes on, and, it, and Israel's got a good gas tank, so. And Israel goes up and up and up and up. Like, mm -hmm. he just moves and faster, like, oh, my God. This is going to be such a great fight. Like, I understand why Dana White is so excited about it, because this was the fight to make. Yeah, and, and so, the, def, definitely, the, definitely the fight to make. And I think you broke it down pretty well. You know, and that's the thing. Costa, like you said, one-punch knockout power, but he's got to touch Israel's chin. Israel, very hard to touch, very slick, yeah. uh, moves well on the feet, very good uh, head movement. Uh, I, I mean, he's a, he's a world-class <laughs> kickboxer. Like, the way he moved with Anderson Silva, who was one of the best to ever do it, like, he was the, like, Silva was the king of the smooth movements, and Adesanya made him look like an amateur, like, made it look so much easier than what Silva did, so yeah. I'm like, if this guy moved like that with Anderson Silva... I'm I'm really excited what, about. What I, I would have paid to see a prime it. Anderson now, Silva. I'm to like it. Yeah, what I would have paid to see a prime Anderson Silva versus Israel Adesanya, not end of his career Anderson Silva. That would have been amazing. I agree with you 100. percent So then, what's your prediction? Do you have one fear? Who takes it, Israel or Paulo? Costa? This is hard. Yeah, I know. Okay, Adesanya by points or Paulo Costa by submission. <laughs> okay, that's a that's fair enough. So you got an either or. So if Adesanya wins, you think it's by decision. If Costa wins, you think it's by yes. submission. Fair if enough. It stays five round, if it lasts five round, Adesanya got it because his movement, because he's going to impress the judges with his weird uh, attitude and 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 because he can move so well and he can like strike from different angles. But if if it's going to be finished, it's going to be either a knockout or I dream about a Paulo Costa submission on Adesanya. That would be interesting for sure. So I am going to take Israel. I think as the fight wears on, Costa is going to slow down. And like you said, I think Israel will put his foot on the pedal. So uh, I will take Israel. But I, again, it could go either way. So that's why I'm actually really looking forward to these because there's not, there's sure. not fights that you're just like, oh, yeah, this guy's going to win. It could go either way. Mm -hmm. So... All right, we have taken enough of your time. I really, really appreciate you coming on the show. Before I let you go, where can we find you? And is there anybody you'd like to shout out? Um, you can find me on Instagram at Eden Von Hell, and you can find me on Twitter at Mikol Disney MMA. Same on Facebook. Um, I want to thank all the gyms that are helping me to get ready. Raini Clan, Flow Jiu Jitsu, um, Puerto Ricano team, um, Aspera Training Center for my strength and conditioning, uh, Food Springs and Firetex for sponsoring me with supplements and gear. So, and thank you so much for having me and for, for taking the time to talk to me. Absolutely. <laughs> Listen, we have to thank you because without you, we don't have a show. So, um, <laughs> again, thank you for coming. Uh, I'll plug myself. I'll whore myself out real quick. You can find my writings at MMA Intel, uh, Combat Press, where we also simulcast this show as well. Uh, the YouTube page. Uh, follow me on Facebook and Twitter uh, at Big Riles MMA. Uh, so, Nicola, again, thank you very much for coming on. Um, we look forward you, to me. No problem. We look forward to your fight, and uh, obviously we hope uh, you're a friend of the show now, so we hope you take the victory uh, come October 10th. Um, so for Mikkel, I am Riley Contact saying keep watching the fights, keep watching the show, and go fuck yourselves. Good night.